Hi everybody, I'm origami designer Tim Rickman. In this video I'm going to be instructing you how to fold this. It's my origami model based on a crab louse. Now I realize that's kind of a disgusting subject to model an origami after, but uh, in the origami world arthropods of all kinds make very interesting subjects to model because of their segmented bodies and appendages, things like that. And as a designer, I try to only model subjects that really haven't been done too much before. Uh, and uh, although other creepy crawlies have been modeled by other artists, uh, bed bugs, for example, this one really hasn't been done yet. I'm actually pretty proud of it. Uh, so far, I think it's one of my best designs. So I'm really hoping that you'll judge this model on the merit of its design uh, rather than anything else. That being said, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to fold the base, which looks like this. It's going to take us a little while to fold this, so I'm imagining this video is going to be split up into two parts. The second part uh, being me showing you how to shape the model, which is a pretty lengthy process too. Our model here is based on a 24 by 24 box grid. And um, if you've studied uh, breaking a number down into primes, you know that 24 can be expressed as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Well, we're going to be dividing the paper up so we can exchange the multiplication symbols for divisions and use those numbers to help us decide how to divide this paper up. Dividing the paper in half is really easy. You just bring the bottom edge to the top of the next section and make a crease. But uh, there's also a three in there, so this is a pretty simple method of dividing a paper evenly into thirds. And to do that, you want to set your paper up, as I have here, with diagonal creases and um, book creases going horizontally and vertically. And you're going to fold this top flap down, and you're going to make a crease from this corner to this corner. Uh, if you want the paper to look a little more neat, you don't have to fold through the entire length here. You just need to roll the paper back to that position and put a little tick mark here where this diagonal intersects that line. And this is going to be a reference point we'll use to fold the paper into thirds. I like to go ahead and add another one on this side to make it a little easier to find that. And you want to turn the model over and do the same thing on the opposite side here to make a four reference points. Like that. Okay, now that we have these, you're going to bring this bottom edge up to match where those two intersections are. And uh, you don't want to make a really firm crease here because if you're a little bit off, you want to be able to roll the paper a little bit more. So flip the paper over like this and bring your bottom edge to the folded edge we've just created here. And really, Take your time and make sure that everything here is lining up correctly. If it's not, uh, just take a moment to adjust things. When you start to press down here, you'll notice that these uh, reference points also help you to make sure that this crease is lying where it should. Go ahead and fold through the paper firmly once you have everything in place. Now you're going to open the paper up and do the same thing going the other way. 
So we've taken care of our division of three, but we have three more divisions of two. Uh, I'm going to leave it up to you to fold those because that's pretty explanatory. You just fold each panel in half and then in half again and in half one more time. This third is really the, the only tricky part. So now we have a piece of paper that's been divided into thirds going horizontally and vertically. Now all we have to do is to continue to bisect each of those panels in half. I'm going to make a suggestion that when you're performing these bisections you alternate the paper 90 degrees in between each one. So for instance, I'm going to fold down the length of the paper here. And instead of creating the next set along here, I'm going to turn the paper and do these sections. It keeps the paper a little more neat as you're making these. Uh, if we went ahead and did all of them going one way, the paper has a tendency to kind of want to bunch up and it makes it difficult to really lie this flat. But uh, if you alternate 90 degrees between each section, it makes it a lot more easy to, to fold all of these uh, pleats. All right. All right, so now we have our 24 by 24 box grid. I recommend using an 8.5 by 8.5 square that's been cut from printer paper, as I have here, if you're going to be practicing. Uh, if you're using uh, two-sided paper, as I did in the example that I showed you at the beginning of the video, there is a little bit of color change along the legs, which can be fun. Uh, if you're going to do that, you want the main color, you want the body to be <clears throat> face up, and you want these outside most creases to be mountain folds, and these uh, center line creases to be valleys in that case. Um, I've gone ahead and drawn out most of the creases that we're performing in this next section. Hopefully that will help in this uh, instructions. Um, I've already drawn a crease pattern for this and post it to my Facebook, uh, but I've made a few modifications to that since. So I'll try to draw up an updated version and post that to my Flickr so you can have that as a reference as we're folding along here. I'll put the address to that in the uh, description of the video below. Um, there's several different places we can start with this, but uh, I like to begin with this diagonal crease here which starts 11 spaces down from the top corner and it travels from that point a distance of 4 over and 3 up. So find those reference points and go ahead and fold like this. And you want to go ahead and do that on the other side. 11 spaces down, 4 over, and 3 up. Okay. Now we can go ahead and start these diagonals uh, from the point of 11 spaces down. It's just going to be a diagonal that travels through five boxes. One, two, three, four, and five. And then double back and travel five spaces back to the edge 
So one, two, three, four, and five. Repeat that on the other side from where this diagonal hits the edge. One, two, three, four, five, and then back down. <clears throat> and then there's a mirror of this diagonal that happens here. It's uh, going to travel down and toward the center, four boxes over and three down, just like this. You can kind of line this up. The very center crease here, it's going to travel through the very middle of that line. If you understand what I'm saying, uh, I can kind of help aim this. It's a pretty short diagonal, so you might not need that. And uh, we're going to be bisecting this, making a rabbit ear, so Dissect this angle like that, and then this angle, bring the edge to the folded edge. And you should already have a diagonal here from when we set up our box bleeding, so grab it ear and fold to the outside. Uh, it's going to look like this. And go ahead and complete that on the other side. <clears throat> where this diagonal hits the edge, you want a diagonal that travels four spaces over and three down. And then wrap it ear this corner as well. push the sides in and push this flap to the outside edge and it'll look like this. Okay, now we want to do that same rabbit ear in here. It's a little trickier because we have the top of the paper but um, hold the paper something like this and begin that bisection. here and then uh, you can just push the, the corner where these come together is going to actually be right here in the uh, the corner of these boxes so just fold up here and then dissect these angles like that. Repeat on the opposite side. And push up here to accomplish those other sections for your rabbit ear here just like that all right next what we need to do is create this diagonal that travels up three and over one up three and over one and you don't quite have enough space to connect to another corner up here you're just going to continue that line up um, it's going to be a valley fold but you want to Start. Just make a mountain fold. Up three and over one. <clears throat> and then once you have that, uh, go ahead and reverse fold that. 
by turning the paper over and uh, from that corner to the edge of the paper, making that a reverse fold. So now you have something that looks like that. We'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, now what you're going to do is reverse fold this crease that's in between the corners of these two triangles. And this line that's coming off of this point here, you're going to mountain fold that, it should already be a mountain fold, and hinge this back like this. And as you do that, you should be able to lie this rabbit ear flat. And it'll look like this. Now this corner should lie right on top of the boxes behind it. And you can use that to position the paper and make sure that everything is lining up and go ahead and flatten everything down here. Let me show you a close up of what that looks like. You have your rabbit ear down here. This tiny corner is hanging out up here. And you have your one by three angle right there. And repeat that on the other side. Find where this crease is that starts where this diagonal hits this folded edge. Uh, hinge this back. Like that. And then this rabbit ear should fold nicely and neatly under it. And I'll lay the paper flat and align it with the boxes underneath. Make sure everything is lined up and pressed down flat. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold through all the layers of this first row of boxes. Uh, you already have a crease running along the length of here. But we're going to add some new creases in the corners here. So press down firmly here. This is going to be setting us up for a sink fold that we'll be doing next. And in this corner as well. <coughs> and then uh, keep that folded and then turn the paper over and do the next line as well. Crease all the way out to the edge. No. This is what it should look like then. Okay. So now we have, it should have created, let me get this unfolded here so I can show you what I'm talking about. It should have created this set of, of uh, creases that look like M's. I find it useful at this point to uh, re assert where the mountain and valley folds are in our pleating um, because we kind of reverse folded a few of them so it's advantageous to just go back and lightly uh, reinform the paper where it needs to be going like be careful where you have the paper folded up here okay so this part's a little bit tricky what we're gonna do is do this swivel fold with the paper kind of indented here. I hope this comes off easily. Sometimes this part can be a little tricky. So make this swivel fold one more time. And now what we're gonna do is um, this crease needs to be a mountain fold. And then the next should be a valley. This uh, diagonal here in the corner needs to be a valley <coughs> leading into these corners. This should 
View Valley. <clears throat> Sometimes it's helpful to start the other side too, that way everything is in the same motion. So turn the paper around, indent the paper, and make this swivel fold. Um, so this is a mountain, and this next diagonal section here, valley, push this up here. There we go. Kind of clicked into place. I hope it does the same for you. It's a little tricky. Okay. And then that inside M needs to be mountain folds. Just fill it around with this until you get it. Uh, And this very inside little one right there, that should be a mountain fold surrounded by valley folds. Might be able to start pressing this together and then pushing those angles down to get this in motion. Okay, so this is collapsing down now. This is what it should look like. Here and then the uh, <clears throat> rabbit ear fold needs to be reformed here as well. That's gonna help the whole thing lie flat like this. So this is what the right side should look like now. You have the paper pleated over like this, and then there's a sink fold happening right there, like this. And do the same thing on the other side. Sure, that's over. Tricky part of getting this very inside one to pop out helps to kind of push this down to angle that out. Okay. There we are. So that started, and then reform the uh, rabbit ear up here. Okay, so this is what this looks like now. Now, what we're going to do is turn the paper over, and you're going to see. Let me get my pencil it rolled away from me. Okay, you're gonna use this corner as a reference again to find this line that's coming up here. And we're going to bisect the angle of that line and the folded edge. And as we do that, kind of swivel this part of the paper down. like this. Okay, so we just swiveled this down. This corner's not precise. There it is. Okay. And then you want to lie the paper flat and you're going to press this down so that it's uh, parallel with the lines going uh, vertically here. <laughs> and do the same thing on this side. Find this point and the angle is in between this pleat from our box pleating. And you're gonna match that with the folded edge below it by swiveling this down. Like so. Okay, this created a line that's one third of a box over its uh, from that from the edge of one of the boxes. 
uh, because our line travels up three and over one, and that was our angle of attack when we swiveled it back. Now we have <clears throat> this new reference line. And uh, if you were looking at the crease pattern, you'll notice that this diagonal section here doesn't fall exactly on the crease pattern or on the 24 by 24 grid. Uh, so we're going to use this crease to form that line. So turn the model back over and fold this top flap in half along the existing crease there. So you'll have this folded edge as a reference to fold the top folded edge down along that edge. And you'll see it doesn't quite come to the bottom. Fold all the way through that. It doesn't quite come to a point. It hangs off a little bit like that. And that's what we want on both sides. your flaps are lying one on top of the other so that both these diagonals mirror one another. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to open it back out and uh, reverse fold this top one so that we can fold this top flap down like that. And on the other side as well, take the flap up Open, reverse fold, and then sink that down into here. Remembering that it doesn't come to the point, it comes to a space that's one third a box length above that point. So now we need to create these lines that are also one third of a box away from this edge. And we do that. Uh, by folding all this down and then you want to lie this flat and start with the second crease from the edge. Fold that back. This is similar to the operation we did before. This line is already creased for us. We're just going to hit the edge here. Make sure all this is lying on top. So you fold this back and then fold firmly through there. Here and then fold the next section down and fold firmly through the end there. And what that should accomplish for us is creating some, some lines that are going to help us sink See now there's a crease running through section here. So go ahead and make the outside one a mountain fold and begin to sink using the diagonals we made recently. Remember this outside one is a mountain though we just reversed it so you'll need to reverse it back to a mountain. And then that next line. Now this corner here should when you collapse this down should rest right along this edge. And then you should have a flap that looks like this. Doesn't quite come to a point. And it's kind of an overhang there. Okay, let me finish that on the other side. Like this. All right, now we're going to undo this. It'll collapse back down easily later. Um, pull all this apart. <clears throat> what we need to set up now are these creases at the top here. So start from the exact middle. We're going to make 
a diagonal that travels through two boxes that, and then double back to the top through two boxes down two more and then the next angle goes up one like that and then back this direction okay so you should have this on one side repeat that here two boxes back up through two boxes down through two up one and then back and up to the edge. So that's what the top should look like now. Now there's some creases we need to perform in the center. Um, on the old model I had these heart shapes further up uh, but the model lies a lot more flat if we set them back further that'll make more sense later but uh, the points of these lie along this edge of uh, this formation here um, and uh, let's see this is the center so if we move two over and start the outside edge of this heart just fold through that box there and then make it like an M shape and then uh, fold through two boxes off of that like so and then back up completing that, that little heart shape you can fold through these boxes if you want to as well it kind of helps but um, it's not necessary you don't really have to those are kind of going to get brought up uh, when we pinch together this section later on so just go ahead and continue on this box all right so we should have most of everything we need now uh, except for a couple of creases here. So go ahead and recollapse this part of the model. Like I said, it should go easier now. Indent here, swivel fold, and uh, put everything back the way it was here. Make sure that these are overlapping like this. That's important. I suppose it would be more optimal to create the boxes we just made before we did the outside edge stuff, but I wanted to use that reference point so you knew where I was. So these, um, this is going to be a valley, and you're, you're just sinking, box pleating this large rectangle in the middle. actually reverse folding these um, mountain folds on the edge to accomplish this because it's beginning on an odd number down the side of the page the paper
And when you get to this last two panels here, uh, what you're going to do is instead of folding this down in there, you want to push this back like that and lay this down flat like that. And on the other side, just like that, kind of hold here and make a diagonal to the end here. Lay that down flat so it looks like that. All right, and now we have to finish up our uh, sink folds along here. So reform these rabbit ears. And then you're going to lay the model down and again, uh, let's see, fold, turn it over, fold the mountain fold. And then your valley through all those layers in the corner. Okay. Now we have creases that correlate to these uh, lines I've drawn, which are the M's from the sink fold we did earlier. M shapes. This little tiny last section here in the diagonal is a mountain fold and it is surrounded, well I guess in this case it's just one valley fold next to it. Push down here into that angle. You're going to fold this rabbit ear back now, reverse folding those creases, and then it should lie down like this. do that on this side as well. All right, so we're getting close to the end of finishing the base for this model. And uh, as I'm looking at the timer here, it's looking like this video is gonna run a little long. So what I'm gonna do is split this up into two sections. The next video is gonna be uh, all the shaping. And uh, we'll make sure to name the videos the same thing so uh, you'll be able to find the other one easily. I'll put the link in the uh, description of the video below so you can go find that when this one is over. I don't really know. Tell me what you guys think. If you like just one whole video all in one segment or if you like it split up like that. Um, I don't know. Don't forget to leave comments on the video too and tell me what you think of this model. Uh, and uh, it's always good to give me a, a subscription. That's always nice. So we're coming back to these heart shapes here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to flatten out three panels of this and then fold a mountain fold and then a valley fold. Right? Like like this. And then we're going to leave these two flat and uh, we're going to find this heart shape and gather up these pleats like this so that when everything's lying down like that it looks just like one heart shape instead of a heart shape with boxes behind it. Okay. And this is why you didn't really have to fold those boxes before. You can, it kind of helps to guide this next crease, but what you're going to do is hold them on like this. This back here is going to be a mountain fold. Mountain, mountain, and then this is a valley. You just push here. And 
and then pinch here. And hopefully all those layers go back like that. And so we've got three, and then pleat down like this. We're going to push these out so that these creases are not bent. You know, they're standing up. And then this diagonal right here, this corner, you're going to have valley folds and then a mountain fold pushing into that, like this. Okay? It's a little tricky, especially if you're using a smaller piece of paper. Um, and then these V shapes on the side. Those become valley folds. If everything goes right, on both sides here, it should collapse down just like that. I know that's a little bit tricky, but uh, I think you'll get it. Okay, and the back of the model looks like this. These little flaps hang off the edge here. All right. You want to do that on the other side. Um, everything should be mostly in place. Gather up all the pleats underneath here. Hold all this together. Kind of push up here. And push this back. See, I didn't do the boxes on this side. And it's a little, little harder, but it's not that difficult. Okay, you want to stand this up. Make valley folds in that corner and then push up underneath here on the right side. Make sure those are standing up straight and then collapse the sides down. Okay, we're just going to roll with it. All right. And now you should have this. Okay. Now we need to push down here and box pleat this corner like that. Here as well on the edges, box pleat this down, and then you're going to make a valley fold one, two, three creases in, push all this down, push this flat, and it's going to make one last diagonal crease right here. Okay, and then do that on the other side, box pleat this down, and turn it around. Find one, two, three from this folded edge. Valley fold that up, and as you do, it's going to create this diagonal crease here. All right, so there's only one more little step we do to finish the base here. Someone pointed out that this doesn't exactly line up, so we just push this flap down, and that should satisfy the requirements of a successful crease pattern that could be folded into a base, which, despite the fact that there are many layers, lies flat. Uh, <laughs> thanks uh, for helping me out with that. I'm pretty new at origami. I've only been doing this a couple of years, and even though some of the stuff looks pretty technical, you know, uh, it's a community event, I think, origami is, you know, getting together and sharing ideas. So I'd love to hear your ideas about this model. Like I said, in the next model, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to shape this up. We're going to go from this to this. And if you've gotten this far, I'd say you're doing very well. 
So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you had as much fun as I did, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks everyone. Bye for now.